By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing with a mono black deck. Um, it's mainly revised, but there's also some other cards in there. And I'm playing against the uh, Sultan of Reprints. And this is a player who really enjoys reprints, especially reprints um, from um, reprints in other languages. So German, Spanish, French, I mean, you name it. So we'll probably see some interesting uh, cards uh, in his deck. And he's playing, uh, as you can see, he's playing with red and with black. And let's go to the game. We're already in my turn three, so I'm on play, it seems, and I, I'm playing a Hypnotic Spectre. Obviously, when you're playing black, it's a creature you need to have. And here is an interesting one. It's the Sorcerer's Queen, and this is actually from the Arabian Nights expansion. And you can tap it to make another creature 0-2. And this is often combined um, with the um, with the Nettling Imp and the Sangir Vampire. And then you kind of got a combo going. And now I'm playing a, a, a disc. Coming into play tapped. So he's taking a damage here. And there's a Drain Life. So I am losing my Hypnotic Spectre here. So he's gaining two life from the Drain Life. And as you can see, the City of Brass has golden borders. Uh, that is because it comes from a championship deck. So you had championship deck. So it probably has that um, the different uh, background as well. It doesn't have your normal uh, magic gathering background. And here, see, I'm making a mistake here, thinking I have more mana than I actually have, playing a royal assassin. Oh, and okay, so I decide to play my um, dark ritual to get this thing going. So I'm not really willing to use my disc here, but at the same time, I'm putting so much on the board, it's not really worth um, using my my disc anymore. And my opponent is playing a Sangir Vampire. And as you can see, I played that Anime Dead over the Hypnotic Spectre. And Anime Dead is a card that we've been seeing more and more um, in old school tournaments. And I really like the combination of the disc and the anime dead. I know a lot of people play it in combination with regenerate creatures. Of course, you have the uh, disc control deck. But I kind of like the anime dead combination as well because you can take creatures from your graveyard or your opponent's graveyard. And I'm actually deciding to blow everything up. So when I'm looking at this, I, I could have played this much, much better, but I don't play with the disc often. And here you see my opponent playing another vampire. So I'm actually helping him instead of helping myself. And this is nice. This is Pestilence. So this is a card for four mana. It's an enchantment, two black and two. And when you pay one black, it deals one damage to every player and every creature. And one of the interesting things about this card is that it's a common. And it still surprises me that it's a common because it, it, it has such a strong ability. Playing a Hypnotic Spectre. And again, this is one of those cards where I feel I want to do more with it. And especially when you use it in combination with the Black Knight. Because what happens is the Black Knight deals first strike. And then if you need a little bit of extra damage, you can just ping that with the um, uh, with the Pestilence. And now I'm playing a Disrupting Scepter and followed up by another Black Knight. But again, I'm kind of holding myself hostage here. Um, using the Disrupting Scepter here on my opponent's hand, so he's discarding a City of Brass. Because if I would activate the Pestilence now, I'm, I'm killing three creatures on my side and just one creature on his side. So he, he doesn't mind. And he's attacking me again for four, so I'm on 11, playing a second Sengir. So it's already the third Sengir Vampire we've seen hitting the board. So that's a bit crazy for me here. And what can I do? Attacking with everything. Probably planning to kill everything, kill the Sangirs. So he's getting a counter immediately. Doesn't really matter now because I have to pay four anyway if I want to blow everything up. At least I assume, and I think that's what, what we were talking about. I was asking, um, does it get the plus one, plus one counter immediately or like at the end of turn, which, which sometimes happens with some cards. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So I'm dealing four damage to everything and that means that he's going to lose both of his Sangir Vampires. Uh, I'm losing, of course, my two Black Knights, but that seems like a fair trade. And remember, I'm only on seven life here. And now I'm playing the Autumn Willow. 
zero one flyer with regenerate so it's a nice combination with the disc but also with the pestilence and it looked like he was going to play a hypnotic specter there but he's not okay he is interesting because it looks like i can kind of ping it to death what you do have to remember is when you activate the pestilence Every time you activate it, you have to regenerate the Autumn Willow. So it's not like I'm going to deal four, regenerate it once. No. Deal one damage, regenerate. Deal one damage, regenerate, and so forth. And there is the Tome, the big book. So I'm blocking and I'm regenerating. When you regenerate, it taps. And there's this new rule now with the regeneration shield. I'm not quite sure how it works, but maybe you can let me know. Oh, and this is pretty cool. There's a nightmare here. Oh, it's such a beautiful, uh, such a such a beautiful card. At the same time, I'm stripping something. Doesn't really matter. I guess I choose the uh, swamp because I saw that uh, drain life earlier. Remember, I'm only on seven. But I mean, look at my nightmare. It's just beautiful in a mono black deck. And it is now a 7-7 flyer because it gets um, plus one, plus one for each swamp that you control. And uh, really nice art by Anson Maddox. I believe it's Anson Maddox at least. And um, as you can see, I'm now dealing two, but paying four because I have to regenerate my Willow the Wisp twice. And I'm attacking and that's game. So I've won. Oh, he actually had it in his hand as well. That's hilarious. Um, so this was game number one and let's quickly go to game number two game number two and let's see what's gonna happen So the Sultan of reprints is going to be on the play And let's see what he can do And there's a swamp a dark ritual and yes, that's a hippie and this is a classic play I mean, this is as old. Oh, I've got okay. 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 I'm doing a dark ritual too for a moment there, I thought I was opening with a hippie as well, but I'm not. Ooh, and there's that rat from my opponent, that lightning bolt. That's actually pretty, pretty, pretty serious. Like that's that's pretty serious here. That's that's a good move. I'm losing a card, but it's even worse because in the old situation, now I could have used my royal assassin and you know kill my opponent's hippie. Instead, I'm taking two more damage, losing another card. And as you can see, oh, there's another hypnotic specter, and I just have a single black knight. That's not going to do a lot here. I'm not drawing any answers. And especially when you're playing a mono black deck, black is really difficult because with a terror, you, you cannot get rid of them. I don't even play a terror, I believe, in this deck, but it's difficult. Okay, I'm drawing a Hypnotic Spectre off myself, but my hand is empty. And another Lightning Bolt, so that's the second one already. Taking four more damage, I'm on eight. I mean, this is not even a game. This is a slaughterhouse, this is crazy. And I wonder what that hippie on the right side is that my opponent is playing with, what language it is. Because as you can see, it has a pretty long name. Um, I can block one, go into four, and boom, there is an earthquake. And I mean, that's game. Good game here from the uh, Sultan of Reprints went really, really fast. So let's quickly go to game number three and see who wins this matchup. Game number three to decide who's going to win this matchup. So it's 1-1. One, one. It was a really quick game, that uh, that second one. I mean, it just got completely bashed by those Hypnotic Specters. I mean, maybe if he wouldn't have played that Lightning Bolt on the Royal Assassin, it would have been a different story. But okay, uh, I've lost 1-1. One, one. I'm on the play now. I'm the player on the right side, obviously, with the Timmy Playmat, playing against the Sultan of Reprints. And like I said in the introduction, he loves foreign cards. And there's a sinkhole from my side. Such a good card, sinkhole. Land removal for two black mana. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Playing here a third swamp. Is there a hippie coming in? Now there's a hypnotic specter from my side. So are we kind of going to see what we saw in um, the second game? But then this time I'm the one who's playing hippies. Oh, and look at that. He's discarding a card. He's not drawing any land. So... This, this this has everything in it to be a very one-sided game here. Hitting him for twos, going to 18. And he's losing the Nightmare. And he's just passing turns, so he's, he's not drawing any land. There's nothing he can do. Maybe if he gets a Dark Ritual, he can play something out, but he's losing a card again, and this time it's a Sorcerer's Queen. 
you know, these games happen. Um, I always want every game to be a, a spectacle, but it doesn't always happen. At least he's picking up his hand now because he got, has that mountain, so hopefully he can play something out. I mean, in, in, when you have, you just want to have fun games, and when games like this happen, you almost like, ah, please, just have a lightning bolt now and kind of bolt my hippie, and then we can move on. But he doesn't, and there's another Hypnotic Spectre. Uh, I mean, a Hypnotic Spectre that he has to discard drawing another card and there's nothing he can do i guess and he just needs that magical number three because then he has a lot of play options i believe in his deck and he's going to 10 already and even my royal assassin is now joining the attack force and he's losing another card that's another hypnotic specter tapping three who playing a disrupting scepter that can use at once hey when your opponent's down in magic you gotta kick him I mean, everybody who's played Magic knows that. Although, I kind of feel bad now when I look back at it. And there is a Dark Ritual followed by a Mountain, and he's, <laughs> he's playing a Greed. Oh, man. I mean, that's not going to help him. Uh, greed is a pretty nice enchantment um, from the Legends. You pay a black one, and I believe you pay two life, and then you can draw a card. So it's like, a, it's, it's a Book of Rest, but then a lot better. He's going to seven. You know, back in old school, it used to be the case if it was an artifact, the artifact, but that doesn't count for all artifacts, obviously, but the artifact cost was always very heavy because it was colorless mana. So it wasn't like you have to be committed to a color and you can put it in any deck. And that's it, that's game. And my opponent's showing his hand and it's just very sad. It wasn't really a game. Um, winning this match uh two to one here from sultan the reaper and king but um we'll we'll see you get back okay i guess we're we're actually finishing uh the game here but i mean he needs a miracle to to get back to get back in this game and i guess i'm just gonna now use my disrupting scepter to get rid and there's even a strip mine oh my goodness I get, okay, this is fun. I'm trying to end the game with him having no cards in hand. And I guess the one permanent, which is greed on the battlefield. That would be quite fun. And because I took care of his swamp, he cannot kill himself. So that would have been interesting as well. I think that's what the Sultan asked me. Like, oh, can I at least kill myself? I'm sorry, man. I took away your swamp. I, f I feel bad. Um, but I'm killing him here. And that's game. So I'm winning this match 2-1. to one, And I know the Sultan has a lot of pretty cool decks. Not all reprints. Some of them are like this one. But tons of cool decks to look at. So I'm looking forward um, to play against them. Thank you for this matchup. And thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks. The channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to see more old school games... Click on the videos that are appearing right now on the screen or visit the YouTube channel. That's Timmy the Sorcerer if you haven't done so already. We've got, I, th I believe now, about 70 videos and the majority of those is just old school games. Some are like this one. You know, some are, some are more exciting, some are less exciting, but there's a lot of stuff. So if you love old school magic, if you love the decks, uh, come hang out, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know what kind of content you like, what you'd like to see so I can... See if maybe I can accommodate. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time.